All right, welcome back to Pathophysiology, Lecture 2, Part 4, Pain Throughout the Organ Systems. Although we're still in the abdomen, we're kind of switching into the pelvis here, so let's get started. Um, with uh, We'll talk about ovarian cysts and uh, spermatic cord twisting. Um, first off, let's go with ovarian cysts. So ovarian cysts are cysts on the ovary. They're usually benign or non-cancerous fluid-filled sacs caused by imbalanced hormones. For example, in polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, multiple cysts are common. Essentially what is happening is that as the egg attempts to leave the ovary, it gets stuck on the outside layer and dies, as you can see right here, leaving behind an empty sac that's left over. As months pass, more and more eggs go through the process of getting stuck and becoming a cyst until there are many or poly cysts. Since birth control pills prevent ovaries from producing eggs during ovulation, they reduce the risk of producing cysts in this manner when you have PCOS. Although the cysts can be painful for some women, they usually go unnoticed, except maybe some lower abdominal or pelvic pain, or just a feeling of fullness. Uh, an ultrasound is an excellent method to detect ovarian cysts. Treatment of typical ovarian cysts is usually not needed other than anti-inflammatory medications such as ibuprofen, but occasionally surgery is required if the cysts did not resolve on their own within a few months. PCOS patients usually do not eliminate the cysts without intervention though. Here we see an ovarian cyst on an ultrasound. As you can see toward the bottom left of the lower image, it shows as just an empty space. The UB above it is the urinary bladder. The UT just outlines the uterus. The massive cyst on the top right gross up here, uh, gross picture, is not typical. That's a pretty big cyst. It's going to take a bit more than ibuprofen to relieve those symptoms. The twisting of the, somat of the spermatic cord is called uh, testicular torsion. Uh, it's a medical emergency. In fact, the twisting of just about anything in the body is a medical emergency because blood flow is cut off like a tourniquet and all of the distal tissue would die. In some cases, there's a deformity that causes this twisting called a bell clapper deformity, but twisting of the sm spermatic cord is usually from blunt trauma and is extremely painful. Uh, an ultrasound is a good tool for diagnosing testicular torsion, but treatment should be immediate by physical physically twisting it back and sewing the testicle to the wall of the scrotum to prevent it from happening again. Notice that the untwisting has to be done within six hours. Otherwise, the testicle will likely prematurely die from ischemia. Moving on to muscular skeletal pain, we'll briefly visit gout, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, sciatica, osteomyelitis, and cellulitis. Okay, we've all heard of gout before, right? If you haven't, don't worry about it. This is the one where we see someone with a really big, swollen, and very painful first toe. But it's not restricted to just a big toe. Gout is just deposition of uric acid crystals, and they can deposit themselves almost anywhere. Mostly we see patients when the crystals are in a joint because that brings physical pain where it might not hurt at all when deposited in the cartilage of the ear as in this lower right picture. This is called a tophi. If you remember your amino acids, uric acid converts into purines and this is typically due to a genetic defect that causes the overproduction of uric acid, but obesity can also be a factor. Testing includes ruling out rheumatoid arthritis because RA is an autoimmune disease that completely destroys joints. And arthrocentesis is just a fancy name for sticking a needle in the joint and sucking out the uric acid, but an x-ray is a good cheap and fast tool to visualize the joint. Along with physical symptoms, the x-ray may be enough to begin treatment.
First among the treatment is to convince the patient to stay away from purines. These include shellfish, organ meat like liver, and sweetbreads. Uh, what is a sweetbread? It's not what you think. You might want to look it up. We should always try to recommend that the patient loses weight, but more often than not, this approach fails. In the meantime, NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories drugs, and uric acid producing drugs are prescribed for flare-ups. What was the name of the medicine for gout that we always see advertised on TV? Does anybody remember? If I had to choose a type of arthritis, I'd choose osteoarthritis because it's not the autoimmune rheumatic arthritis. Osteoarthritis is known as the wear and tear disease because the cartilage is simply worn down to almost nothing from use. Is everyone then going to get it? No, of course not. There are some things that will predispose someone for osteoarthritis like being overweight, distance running, trauma, heredity, and of course getting old. Clearly rubbing a bone on bone is painful and the most common places for osteoarthritis is in the hands, wrists, knees, and feet. The back is also fairly common. In osteoarthritis, it's most difficult and painful when first getting out of bed, especially if the arthritis is in the knees. It'll slowly decrease the pain when moving around a bit, but the pain will worsen the more it is used, which makes sense, right? Uh, you can probably figure out how to treat this. Rest, duh. Recommend anti-inflammatories, duh. Uh, physical therapy may be useful to help maintain the joint's range of motion. And finally, my favorite, uh, chondroitin and glucosamine. Empirical research, that is people's stories, uh, tell us that it's not effective, but uh, you can ask me about it. It's kept me from getting a new cap since 2001. All right, since osteo means bone and penia means small, osteopenia means small bone or a reduction in bone mass. Osteoporosis is also a reduction in bone mass, but is specific for when the bone breaks down faster than it's being rebuilt, leaving a less dense bone behind. We all know that old age is a major, major risk factor for osteoporosis, but so is anything that sequesters or pulls out calcium from the bone. We see this in low estrogen states, an increase in parathyroid hormone and chronic renal failure where calcium is not being reabsorbed like it should. We can directly look at the density of bone with a bone density scan or an x-ray, so diagnosis is fairly straightforward. The best thing to do for treating this is to make sure there's enough hormones and calcium available for bone deposition and do weight bearing exercise. Um, these are just some images and information about a bone density scan. You can see where there's more darkness indicating less bone density. You can also see from the graph on the right that as we age our bones naturally become less dense. That's why the main action that you can take right now in your early 20s is to do a lot of weight bearing exercise. The higher you start up on the graph, on the chart on the top left here, the more density you end up when you're 100 years old. So do it now. And that is the end of this part. We'll pick up next time.